we will go to Michael. This one looks promising. Let's talk. Let, Michael, hi. What would you what would you like to talk about today? Hi, Shannon. Hi, Matt. Great to speak with you. I really appreciate you taking my call. Mm, sure. Well. How you doing? So good, thank you. And I hope the same as well with you. I'm doing um, great. So I wanted to talk. That's awesome. I wanted to talk a bit about uh, Judaism. So I'm an ethnic Ashkenazi Jew and a practicing Messianic Jew. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with Messianic Judaism. I know a lot of people don't know too much about it. Um, so if you're not, I'd be happy to. I am at least it. passingly familiar with it. But I'm probably less. Feel free to feel free to drop your knowledge bombs. Sure. So basically, in the simplest form, we're ethnic Jews predominantly that believe Jesus was the promised Messiah of our people, but we still abide by the laws of the Torah to the best of our ability. Um, that's basically it in the simplest forms. Uh, mm -hmm. And I just wanted to run by an idea with you as to why I believe in God, um, because I've never heard you refute anything like this. And I was just kind of curious to uh, see what you have to say about it. OK, Michael, um, I, I, I'm going I'm to yeah. let you do it. I want to I want to preface this by something, mm -hmm. because when you say you've never heard us refute something, you do realize mm -hmm. that. Even if you say something for which we have no rebuttal, that doesn't demonstrate the truth of God. It's not like a claim stands until oh, it's disproved. OK, I just want to make sure we were on the same page. There. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so last night was the first night of Passover, and we were reading the Haggadah, which is the book that you read during Passover. And one of the lines that it says, and I'm paraphrasing here, so please forgive me, is that in every generation, a nation will rise to destroy you, but I in the end will save you, thus says the Lord. And to me, uh, this is so true, being Jewish. Um, in every single generation, a group of people, whether it be the Greeks or the Romans or the Persians or the Assyrians, has tried to destroy us. But in the end, we've always managed to survive, and we really shouldn't be here. We make up less than 0.02% of the people on Earth. We're 12 rinky-dink tribes from the Middle East that have been scattered across the world. And so for me, as a Jew, it's so powerful that we're still here that I see that as proof of God. And I was just kind of curious as to what both of you uh, thought about this. I have things. Do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go? I'll let you go first. I. Okay. This, this is... So what what I hear with regards to this argument is a bit of confirmation bias, right? So mm -hmm. admittedly, there's been massive amounts of trauma that your people have been through and bigotry and hate and like in it in an inordinate amount of of struggle that you've had to go through in recent history and to this day. So I, I cannot emphasize enough that I, what I'm about to say is not an attempt to diminish that. But that mm -hmm. aligning with this catastrophizing sort of apocalyptic, apocalyptic scriptural verse isn't necessarily evidence for a God. That's a confirmation bias. That's saying, okay, well, my, my lived experience lines up with this thing this one aspect of the scriptural verse, the scripture that my people adhere to, thus I'm perceiving that as evidence. But you would have to kind of mm -hmm. have some blinders on as well, right? Because you could look in that book and see many other things, like multitudes of things that that book says are likely right to a certain degree. But that doesn't mean that everything in it holistically could should be interpreted as being true. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. So let's let's assume that Jews are regularly attacked. I don't I don't know if it necessarily counts as every generation because I'm pretty sure that once you set up a thing that says, hey, you're going to be attacked every generation, not only are you more likely to be attacked every generation, but you're also more likely to see attacks every generation, which plays into the confirmation bias that Shannon was talking about. But the fact that you still exist is because you guys have made an identity of being persecuted and an identity of doing these things. So it's not surprising at all to me that a group of people um, who have always been a tiny maligned group in conflict with others um, would see that as, oh, well, hey, we, we're being attacked just like God said we would. Well, here's the question. What's God doing about it? Why, why, why on earth would anybody say, "Oh, God told us we'd be persecuted constantly"? Well, fuck that, God. Let's let's go out and do something actually productive instead of sitting here whining about how we've been persecuted all the time. So, um, can I respond to that? If that's all right sure. with you. Yeah, of course. Or, I okay. mean, I, I just want to know where where's where's God in all this? But go ahead. Yeah. 
Absolutely. So I had a couple members of my family. My great great grandfather was in the Holocaust. He escaped and he had numbers tattooed on his arm for the yep. rest of his life. He was so ashamed of being Jewish. He wore long sleeve shirts to cover the numbers. So I that's, asked that's um, unfortunate. my grandmother. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I, I asked my grandmother, you know, I said, uh, where was God during the Holocaust? And she said to me, I don't think the right question is, where is God? Where is humanity? And I asked a rabbi about this. And he explained to me that the idea of being the chosen people doesn't mean that God favors us above any other people. What it means is that we were tasked with carrying this enormous burden of the Torah. And through this, we would face the most unusual persecutions. Um, so that's kind of like we look at it as our responsibility to suffer so we can bring light unto the other nations. We have a saying in Hebrew, um, Alleluia et Adonai kol alagoyim. Praise the nations, all uh, praise the Lord, all ye nations, and we look at it as a privilege to carry that burden. Yeah, so except Michael, I didn't ask anything at all about how you look at it. I want to know why on earth seeing this sort of confirmation bias thing leads you to believe that the only reason a group of people who have been continuously, systematically maligned who simultaneously are convinced that they are the special fucking chosen people. How, wh where is, wh how is it that the only reasonable explanation for how that could be true is that God predicted it and somehow God keeps this tiny little group of people persisting when it seems to me that it's that tiny little group of people that keep that group of people persisting? Well, I mean, for me at least, and from the religious leaders that I speak to, it's a, our national identity, and it's our identity of calling ourselves Jews. It's I understand all that. I don't give a shit about that. I want to know why you reach the conclusion that the only explanation for this is that there's a God. Oh, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying this is one of the possible reasons why I believe in it. And I was just curious as to what both of you had to think about it. Oh, so you're just saying that this is something. That, so the reason that you called is because you wanted to hear our thoughts, because this is something that resonates with you. Is it, are you in the are yeah. you in the process of potential deconstruction and you wanted to, to hear alternate thoughts? Or is this something that you still that you yourself feel is a strong argument? So I was raised Catholic formally. Part of my family is Catholic. The other part is Jewish. And I returned mm -hmm. to my Jewish roots a few years ago. And ever mm -hmm. since then, I've been interested in hearing all perspectives. So it was kind of just I wanted to hear what someone on the complete opposite end of the spectrum had to say about this. So is this a, is this an argument that is compelling to you, though? Like you find this compelling? Like if you if you uh, like all other things being equal, if you had not heard this argument before and somebody pointed out to you that there's a piece of scripture that said God says the Jewish people would be persecuted, would that be something that changed your perspective? Would you be like, oh? That is a reason to believe in this, or do you, or were you already interested it in it because you have? Sorry, so just let me finish. Or were, Sorry, or were, yeah. or were you already interested in it as a subject matter, specifically as it pertains to your heredity, and this was some sort of confirmation that you could hold on to? Because it seems to me, like as somebody from the outside, like when I look at that and it says. Jewish God said Jewish people will be persecuted. Lots of people are persecuted. Like lots of groups of people are persecuted. Historically, tribes of people persecute each other just as just as a point of fact. That's a thing that happens. So it wouldn't be an unreasonable prediction for any group to make about themselves or anybody else. So that's why it wouldn't be compelling to me. So I guess my question is, I'm wondering outside of your your heredity and personal interests and religious beliefs, why it would be something that's compelling to you. Well, and again, it would just come back to the amount of times that it's happened to the Jewish people. Um, and also the fact that in, I believe it's Genesis chapter 12, don't quote me exactly. God says to Abraham, those that bless you will be blessed and those that curse you will be cursed. And it oh, what? seems that as we study. I've history, cursed, I've cursed the I'm Jews. Sorry? Am I going to be cursed? Well, I don't think it happens on an individual level. Like, so he was oh, of course not, because that's convenient. Like, so you switched from being a Catholic to a Jew. And you, what what was the reason? What was it that was enough yeah. evidence to switch you from Catholic to Jew? That's what what, I mean. what was the what was well, the tipping me, point evidence? Being of Jewish blood, I felt it was my burden to take up the Torah. Okay. Well, that and, would you would you uh, would you not agree that that is an absolutely shitty reason to believe something? 
because oh i was born oh, I into this particular line of 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 heritage i should believe what they believe yeah i got well, anglican heredity I does that mean that i should go reconvert to being an anglican based on my family's heredity is that a good reason to adopt a belief system well, like, again, I still believed in, as a Messianic Jew, we still very much believe in God and the that, way Christians do. And that's then, not the question, I didn't, though. I didn't, the ask, question. I didn't ask if you were a hot okay, mess. I, was, I asked what was enough to move you from being a Catholic to a Messianic Jew. And your answer was that, me, well, it it's my heritage. And I asked, don't you realize that because it's your heritage is a really shitty reason to believe something? And you didn't answer. I apologize. Um, I do not because there's other circum uh, uh, other um, like extenuating circumstances that also tie back into it. Oh, no, 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 no. Is, is the fact that something is your heritage a good reason to believe it? Not in every instance. In certain instances... Not in any not instance. Not agree. in any instance. You don't... Why can you not be honest? It's really simple. You you already tried to back walk this back just a couple seconds ago when you when you talked about other things. So it wasn't just that it was your heritage. It was your heritage plus this plus this plus this plus this. But I asked if it was your heritage, if that is enough alone to change somebody's mind. No, it is not. Right. So what was added to it that made you change your mind? That's all, all I'm trying to get to is you were a Catholic, which is already bad enough. And then you decided to change to being a Messianic Jew, which is a hot mess of confusion. But I want to know the reason, because if it's a good reason, I'll become a Messianic Jew. <laughs> um, so again, I know you do not believe in Jesus, but from the writings that I read of Jesus, it aligned more, his teachings aligned more with Messianic Judaism than Catholicism, and that was also a major spark. Ah, so you begin by believing in Jesus, and then you interpret Jesus to fit what you find Jesus fits best. Is that a good way to determine what beliefs one should hold? Not by itself. No, not by itself. So where's the thing that makes this rational? Well, to me, it's all these things put together. <laughs> Sorry, but the plural of anecdote isn't data. You don't get to add up a whole bunch of bad evidence and claim that it becomes good evidence. That's just not the way it works. So, it, oh, well, I'm, I'm part, I, I, was, I have Jewish heritage, and when I read the scripture, since I already believe in Jesus, it seems to align more with Messianic Judaism than it does with Catholicism, and, you know, uh, oh, there's all these times where, you know, God supposedly said you were going to be persecuted. And that seems to be, gosh, the overwhelming weight of all of this coincidental crap still adds up to just coincidental crap. You can't demonstrate that any of it's true. You can't even demonstrate that Jesus existed. Well, with, with all due respect, I, like I said, originally the Torah played a huge instance or uh, importance on this, and we can demonstrate that things like the Torah exist. You can yes, and, and so does Harry Potter. Harry Potter, the Harry Potter books exist. Does that mean Harry Potter exists? How dare you suggest that because a no. book exists, you have a good reason? Well, I'm saying certain aspects of the book, I think, help produce a more moral lifestyle that I've led. Oh, 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 Michael, you're Michael, you're down. I'm going to shut up now because Shannon's going to own you. I'm not. <laughs> We're not, gonna, not necessarily going to own you, but you, you're. I want you to recognize that in this conversation, you've switched trains of thought a, a couple times when challenged. So we were talking about what would be convincing. Like if, if you were to present me with a piece of evidence that you think would be compelling, what would that be? And the train of thoughts shifted a couple of times. Like when we pressed up against whether or not you could demonstrate that Jesus existed or was the son of God or resurrected or, or any of those things, then you fell back from providing proof to the Torah when we said, well, it doesn't really matter that a book exists. Then you fell back to, well, moral systems. You keep pushing back like a, a little further and further when challenged and retreating into another line of thought that I think is likely something that contributes to the overall picture that compels you to continue belief. But admittedly, you would have to, sit, you would have to admit that that's not something that you would present someone else with and say, this is the reason that you should adopt my belief. It's not a demonstration of truth. It's an internal justification. 
with all due respect, that was not my intention, so I apologize for doing it. But in the way that I view my religion, they're all connected. So that would be why I was doing How does that contradict what I just said, though? How does that contradict what I just said about it not being a demonstration of truth, but in fact, just a proclamation of your list of internal justifications? Well, I'm sorry. Could you please, you were talking a little fast. Would you mind just repeating that? I'm sorry. I am prone to do that. So that's not a problem. So how does what I just said contradict that, right? So what I said was you're not providing us with a proclamation of truth or any evidence regarding why we should adopt your belief system. What you're providing us with is a list of the internal justifications that you yourself have mm -hmm. in order to continue adhering to this belief system. So you can see why that causes dissonance in a dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're asking you for yeah. a set of evidence. We're saying, what piece of information can you give me that would reasonably compel me to believe something that you believe? And you're yeah. saying, the reason I believe it is X, Y, and Z and not actually presenting it. You're giving me the justifications that you potentially give yourself and not giving me the evidence that I asked for. And, and the reason I stopped- I see is what you're saying. And the reason I stopped is because the prime example right here is that once we pointed out, hey, it's the fact that you have Jewish heritage should never be sufficient uh, to change a belief that way. Uh, and then we went on to try to get more and more things. And then finally you said, well, you find that the Old Testament of the Torah view on morality is, is one you like. Well, I don't care what you like. I find the Torah absolutely vile and disgusting on morality. So when you start saying you're convinced that it leads to a better lifestyle, a better world, well, now all of a sudden, instead of talking about whether or not there's a God, now we're talking about whether or not this system of morals results in a better world. So you're not talking about something completely different. Okay, I see what you're saying. So I was not attempting to like try to convert you or anything, which I know is a weird thing, because I know a lot of Christians and certain aspects of Judaism. Judaism I wish you would try to convert me. That's the whole fucking point, Michael. If you believe that you are right and you are not willing to try to convince mm -hmm. someone that you're right, fuck off. Well, I just wanted to know your specific uh, opinion on the question that I asked. I, I didn't want to just try to come on and convert you. I, I, I can recognize and appreciate that. So I, I understand that, but you have to understand, like when, on, the, on a show like this, we're looking for people to call in and demonstrate, right, that that a God exists so that we can like suss through those ideas. And I understand wanting our perspective and I enjoyed the conversation. You're 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 lovely to talk to. Actually, you're respectful. Yeah. So uh, which oh. which is a nice change of pace. <laughs> to be well, by the way, the, the, fuck off, the fuck off wasn't at you. It was in general at this because oh, this know, is a know, show. This is a show right. where the purpose is for people to call in and explain what they believe and why. And if all they're doing is calling to say, I believe this, and I don't think anything should convince you guys, I don't want you on the show. It's a waste of time. Yeah, because you're saying that's almost like a tacit admission that I recognize my beliefs on reasonable. If it was reasonable and I could provide evidence for it, then I would anticipate you would adopt it. So you're saying that that's not something that you're you can do. But the conversation is something that you're interested in. So that's a good step. Like that's an and explorative it is. step. Yeah. So and, I, and, I and that's what the discord's for and other stuff. But I mean, he, he, I, I'll give let's, one more shot, Michael. Is, <laughs> is there some good reason why anyone should be? Is, what, what is the sufficient reason for anyone to become a Messianic Jew? So the reason that I believe someone should become a Messianic Jew is because to me, it is a great way to honor a God in which we believe in through com uh, the combination of New Testament ideas and through the practices of the um, Torah and the law proposed by uh, Moses and other writings of the prophets. Okay, and so, so you, the sentence that you started with is where the problem is. Right. You said you believe that somebody should be a Messianic Jew because it's a great way to honor a God we believe in. So what you're saying is mm -hmm. someone should be a Messianic Jew if they already believe in the God that would make them a Messianic Jew. Yeah, it's a prerequisite to already believe in order for your argument to be compelling. You, you didn't provide, and you, you might as well have said, hey, give me a good reason for somebody to be a millionaire. Well, if somebody has a million dollars, that'd be a really good reason for them to be a millionaire. That's what you did. I can... I can understand and appreciate what you're saying. And I, as you pointed out earlier, I am a little biased in this as I was brought up in believing in God. So 
I, again, I don't want to waste any more time if someone else is on the line and can try to convince you, but that would be the best way that I could articulate this. Okay. I, enjoy, I enjoyed this. I will. I appreciate. It. I hope you call back sometime. I actually I enjoyed this conversation, and sometimes yeah. I don't. <laughs> so, so I'd thank love you to that. hear. I'd love to hear at some point a defense of a religion that doesn't ultimately boil down to a tautology. That oh well, I think the best reason to be a Christian is if you believe that Jesus Christ was Lord. I mean, well, of course, mm -hmm. that'd be a really good reason to be a Christian, but it. <laughs> But you've you've kind of dumped it all into one bucket, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No, I enjoyed the conversation. I hope you call back. And uh, thank you, Michael. Thank it was you. it was enjoyable. Yeah. All right. Thanks. thanks. I think, I think the question okay, question we're constantly asking is, you know, give us a good reason to believe in God, not to right act as if we believe in God, because that's what we're doing when you say, oh, what religion should you be? Uh, hang on. Like, is there a God? <laughs> Isn't that contingent on which God might exist? And so, hey, what's a, what's a good reason to be a Scientologist? Why, I think it would be a really good reason to be a Scientologist because that is a good way to remove the body thetans from people who believe in Xenu, the intergalactic overlord. That is essentially what Michael just did. I saw where that was going and, all, and I still almost spit out my tea. <laughs> as soon as I hear thetans, I have an involvement. If I drink anymore, I'm going to pee my pants laughing later. 